All right, I know that last video was a lot to chew off. So let's talk about molecular orbital theory as what it predicts and how this corresponds to color chemistry. And hopefully by the next video, we'll get to why this is important for azo dyes. So basic example we always give molecular orbital theory is two hydrogen atoms coming together. And we end up getting, so it looks like this. So the two S like orbitals add together and the two of them subtracted. So this is your structure for hydrogen. Now, when they come together, each hydrogen 1s can be added and subtracted, and we end up getting the electrons going to the 1s. So this would be considered the highest occupied molecular orbital, or the HOMO. This would be the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, or the LUMO. The energy difference between the HOMO and the LUMO here is the wavelength of the light absorbed. So this is gonna to correspond to the frequency of light. Now again, it's not an exact number. If it was an exact number, we'd know the energy of electrons precisely and Heisenberg uncertainty says we can't know that. So we're going to see this hydrogen molecule absorb light on average in that wavelength, but above and below as well to correspond to the uncertainty of the energy of the electrons. Now, as we begin to build up more and more complicated molecules, so something like methane, Yes, I know this is a lot to take in. And what should be scary to you is that I actually drew that from memory. That's how much you do it in inorganic chemistry. This is a beautiful actual counterexample to Lewis theory. So if we look at the molecular orbital structure of CH4, we have a carbon 2s, carbon 2p, and there's three of them. Because you got px, py, pz. And we ended up generating, we got three, four, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight molecular orbitals that are generated. Now, in terms of carbon, it's got two 2s's, it's got two p's, there are four electrons in each hydrogen, so that gives us two, four, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Your highest occupied molecular orbitals are these, and this is what's called a T3G set, and these are your lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals. Again, the energy of light absorbed is gonna to correspond to the difference between the HOMO and LUMO energies. Now, this is the framework for how organic molecules absorb light. Now, this is not the only absorption. You can definitely get higher energy absorptions for something like the HOMO up to an additional higher energy orbital. Typically, we ignore those because, particularly focusing on azo dyes because it's typically going to be outside the visible range. Anyway, we don't care. So you are not limited just to doing the homo, tra homo lumo transitions. Typically, though, the energy we practically measure is the homo lumo transitions. So how does this correspond to azo dyes? Well, let's talk in the next video about how we can shift the energy of these orbitals.